On March 18th, 2022, the Cleveland Browns made one of, if not the biggest move in NFL history, acquiring Deshaun Watson for, among other assets, three first round picks and an unheard of $230 million fully guaranteed contract. Now, Cleveland made this move for two reasons. One, to end their quarterback misery, and in turn, open their Super Bowl window. But this move did not come randomly for the Browns. They had already signed four guys, one being Miles Garrett and the other three heavily focusing on a great rushing game while also trading for Amari Cooper right before the Watson trade happening. All in all, after three more signings after the trade, these contracts totaled up to $772.5 million in total value. So after all of that spending and a disappointing 7-10 season, largely in fact to Watson not playing due to suspension, and when he did, he looked bad. But how in the hell were they able to make these four major moves with a total value of $108 million? despite sitting at negative $14 million in cap space on March 1st. Well, it goes back to Watson and the surge of teams in win-now mode restructuring contracts, and the Browns are able to clear $35.8 million in cap space by converting $44.92 million of Watson's 2023 salary into a signing bonus. But that money doesn't just disappear. It gets spread out evenly, added $8.984 million each year of his contract and adding an extra void year. Now, opinion time. Do I hate this? Principle-wise, I do hate this. Adding money to a contract that could go down as terrible is a bad thing. Watson played bad, there's no way out of this contract considering it's fully guaranteed, and it's so much money now with this cap hit sitting at roughly $63 million in the remaining years of his deal. But from the other side, what other choice did they have? To not improve in the extremely crowded AFC, not to mention the extremely crowded AFC North? Or would you rather bank on Watson improving back to his old self and the salary cap continuing to go up in hopes that that 63.98 million number doesn't look so terrible? So all in all, it is a very risky bet, but this whole ordeal has been a very risky bet. So in my opinion, you're already here. You already made the risk to get Watson. You think he's the guy doubling down to build the right roster and contend to make all of these big contracts and lack of major draft capital worth it i think it's the right move so all right let's go back to these four guys and talk about them and how they fit within the team starting off with their biggest acquisition getting d tackle dalvin tomlinson at four years for 57 million dollars in total value and it's their best pickup considering he's a run stuffer for a defense that didn't have one last year and it showed as they ranked 30th in rushing yards allowed and this is a pretty good price with the d tackle market booming as in terms of aav tomlinson sits at the 15th highest paid d tackle in football which is a pretty damn good price. Now, there is a price on the back end, as in 2027, there is a $7.067 million dead cap hit after his deal is finished up, but getting him was their biggest need. They showed it during the draft too, drafting Siaki Ika in the late third round. They needed to improve their D-line, they needed to improve their rush defense, so I believe Dalvin Tomlinson was a perfect fit at a perfect price. Their second biggest move in terms of AAV, and in my opinion, just impact, is grabbing Zadarius Smith in a trade with the Vikings for a guy who can set the edge across from Miles Garrett. Zadarius Smith has had 36 sacks in the last three years that he has played, asterisks on when he has played if he can stay healthy that is a deadly ass duo with dalvin tomlinson dead in the middle of it 
And last season, no Brown not named Miles Garrett had over three sacks. This is a perfect pickup as Zadarius Smith has been a great edge rusher. They already have a potential defensive player of the year in Miles Garrett. This combo should be great. And they also added a young player during the draft and Isaiah McGuire during the late fourth round, furthering their want to bolster up that edge rusher room. Now, the same thing with Dalvin Tomlinson and the other two names that we're going to get to. This does come at a price, as in 2025, there is a $5.6 million void dead cap hit after his deal ends. Moving forward, staying with the D-line, because there is another one, the Browns picked up Obonia Okoronkwo from the Houston Texans on a three-year $19 million deal, and Ogbo had a great ending to last year, snagging five sacks in his last seven games in 22. As he is brought in for the same reason as Adarius Smith, this D-line needs a lot of help, it's their biggest need, and they added a buttload of reinforcements to it. And, well, the same with Sedarius Smith. There is a price. In 2026, there is a $7.354 million void dead cap hit after his three-year deal ends. And the reason why I'm saying these is to show that they're gonna have to deal with repercussions for these contracts. And to show that the reason why these void dead cap hits are here is to lower your cap hit in 2023, 2024, and 2025. It's to lower those cap hits and you're just going to have to eat a little bit in 2026 when the player you signed is off the team. And this is a common practice for teams that have signed very massive contracts the way that the Browns have. But the largest dead cap hit of the four lies in Juan Thornhill, former safety of the Kansas City Chiefs was signed on a three year $21 million contract who had a career high of nine PDs and comes right in as a replacement for John Johnson III. And hey, they added Rodney McLeod too to just further that safety depth as they viewed that along with the D-line as a massive need. But moving to the dead cap hit in 2026, the same with Ogbo, there is a $9.268 million hit. And uh, yeah, so they're not in good shape cap wise. And a common thing that people can say is, well, they can just restructure more contracts and Deshaun Watson's will be the most popular because it is the biggest. You can clear the most money. Now, I don't believe that you should do that considering there's already a nearly $64 million cap hit in the remaining years of his deal and already nearly a $9 million dead cap hit when his deal is up. And once again, it's easy to say it's just $9 million. The salary cap is very big. Screw it, we can afford that. But I've already listed four players that were just signed that already have dead cap hits that may not seem big, but when you do it enough, they're going to eat at you. So the Browns, I don't think they should continue to restructure contracts, but if they do and get a ring because their roster is that talented, fuck it you get a ring screw it look at the rams look at the buccaneers they are the top two leaders in just dead money this season but it's okay because they got a ring so are the browns going to follow their footsteps or are they going to fail on paper it looks like they should contend they should definitely be up there especially if deshaun watson comes back because their rushing game's going to be great. Their defense is going to improve. This whole thing hinges on Deshaun Watson, one of the biggest moves in NFL history. If he can get it together, this team will most definitely contend, but that is the big question and something I'm very excited to watch this season as Cleveland is all in. But I do wanna answer the question, what is to come if this fails? from a money perspective because most of this has been about money and it's already not looking pretty as of august 17th the browns sit at negative 83 million dollars in 2024 cap space and well the saints have shown that you can maneuver this and if you believe in this core in cleveland you can maneuver it but we still have not seen the consequences of new orleans 
continuing to maneuver the cap and get out of these crazy holes through simply restructuring contracts. So there are two routes. You can restructure contracts, especially if you have a good season and the acquisitions that you have made turn out to be pretty good. You can very easily do that. But there is a second route, and that's a Los Angeles Rams route, where you just kind of reset. Now, I don't think you should do that with Deshaun Watson making the money he's making and the commitment that you've already made, but looking at the players, you can do that. Looking at their expiring contracts, you have Amari Cooper, who would save them $12 million if he is cut or traded next offseason. And with the pickups of Elijah Moore and Cedric Tillman, that one seems a little more likely, and especially very more likely than Nick Chubb, who would also save them $12 million. But I think an extension is more likely than him getting cut. The one who I think is probably most likely is David Njoku, as cutting or trading him would save $9 million. And two more guys, Joel Petonio and Wyatt Teller, would both save them $10 million. I'm not saying they should cut or trade any of those guys if this season does not work out. I'm just saying that those are the options. But what do you think? Do you think this season will work out for Cleveland? And if it doesn't, do you think they should just blow it up? Or just kind of retool or continue to double down with this core? And uh, yeah. That's all I have today. Thank you if you made it this far, and uh, have a good one. Throughout this upcoming season, I plan on doing two podcasts per week. One on Tuesday, or maybe that's Monday, I'm not sure yet, and one on Friday. Live week preview shows Sunday mornings, and uh, I will be updating a lot of charts, doing a lot of charts on stutteringsports.com. Um, all links in the description. The charts are on the screen right now. If you want to tag along, that would be awesome. Yeah, thanks again.